Welcome to the final game of the D3 hockey season. Will we watch Hobart go back to back or see the stars align with Trindy lifting the trophy at their home rink? That is the National Champion Trophy. Hobart will be fighting to bring that back home with them for the second year in a row. Trinity hasn't won since 2015 and will be looking to be back in the spotlight. The time has come, a full 60 minutes to find out who will be crowned the champion. And we are on our way. My name is Daniel Walcott from the Syracuse Crunch. Welcome to the Full 60, presented by D3 Hockey News. How are we doing guys? I'm Chris with D3 Hockey News. We are here for the second edition of the Frozen Four Full 60. Last year we were at Endicott, now we're here in Hartford, Connecticut at Trinity College for the Frozen Four featuring Adrian, Hobart, Utica, and the host Trinity of course. We have Trinity and Adrian playing the 7 p.m. game in the semifinals. It's going to be a, a rousious home crowd, hopefully. We've got Utica and Hobart in the opening game at 3 p.m., so we're going to have that to look forward to, and it should be a great, great group of games. We'll have the championship on Saturday. We'll have some new things for you. So if you're new here to D3 Hockey, the way we got here, we have 13 teams in the tournament. Currently here, Trinity received an auto bid, which means they won their uh, their league, I should say, which they got an automatic bid to the quarterfinal round based on how high they were in the pairwise rankings, which is kind of, it's a confusing system, but it's kind of like power rankings. Same thing with Utica, they won their league, they received an auto bid, also were high enough to get the first round by, uh, except they got the bid over Adrian due to some geographical limits, which that's a whole other can of worms to open up, which we're not going to. But Utica got the bye, they beat Plymouth State to get to here. Adrian had to play a first round game with Stevens Point, they beat them. Then they had to face rival Norbert in the quarterfinals, beat them. Now they're here, they're the lone team that did not receive an auto bid. They had the at-large bid after Norbert beat them in the finals in their league. So that's how Adrian got here. Hobart, they won their league as per usual. They were the top seed, they're here. And they defeated Curry in four overtimes to get here. So we'll see how they recover after that. And that's the system, that's how it's going, and that's how we got the four teams. So if you're a returning customer to the Frozen Four, hopefully you are on the, the YouTube channel at D3 Hockey News. You're gonna know about the full 60 from last year and how it went. It's gonna be a lot different this year, more of a documentary style, gonna be more in depth, a lot more watchable in our opinion. Uh, interviews with all the coaches before the games, after, you know, after the games, assuming who advances. And yeah, well, let's take you through the facilities at Trinity and show you how it is. So as you can see, Trinity's facilities here in Hartford look great. We're currently in their film room uh, for the team kind of filming. That's the media room for this week, so that's great. Uh, we'll take you with a little preview of Utica and Hobart. So Hobart's number one, as you're going to hear in some of these interviews in, in pretty much every statistical category this season that's, that's prominent. Uh, Utica, it's going to be the year. They're back here for the first time since 2013 in, in the Frozen Four, I should say. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that. It's one of Gary Heenan's youngest teams, I think, ever. So we'll see if they can handle the pressure. They've He called it a rebuild year. Well, clearly it's not a rebuild if you're in the, the semifinal game. So if it is a rebuild, well, that, that's a pretty good year to hang your hat on. Uh, head coach Mark Taylor of Hobart, he's looking to win the second straight. He's been in the NCAA tournament the last nine years. He, he knows the deal here, and Utica's going to have to see if they can get him off their game. It'll be tough, and Hobart's going to play their normal game, and we will we'll see how it goes. Refs usually let a lot go in the playoffs, and so that'll make it more fun than usual, and hopefully we get a good game. 
I'm uh, Coach Mark Taylor. I'm the head coach of Hobart College, and uh, I'm with the, the team from uh, Geneva, New York. Last year we beat Adrian to win a national title in overtime, and this year we're looking to, to be whoever it is again and uh, try and do it a second time. I'm Gary Heenan, head hockey coach of Utica University Pioneers. They obviously are they're carrying the torch right now, you know, uh, defending national champions, ranked number one in the nation. They lead in every statistical category as a team. Five All-Americans named last night. Uh, this is a wagon of a team, uh, but I think we match up really well against them. Certainly as, as the number one seed, the, the target's there. I don't think we're we put them on a pedestal as a team in terms of, oh man, this is almighty Hobart. It's almost a blessing that we haven't played in the last few years. We're such a young team. I'm not even sure our freshmen have heard of Hobart before this week. So, you know, we're going in loose as we have been and uh, really excited about the game today. So we just saw one period with Hobart and Utica. I am joined up on the balcony, let's call it, as John's down below. I've got kind of a perch view today, so it's a change of pace for me. Uh, Utica came out, they look kind of kind of shaky. You can kind of tell who's been here, who hasn't. Uh, Hobart pretty much dominated the period. Utica had some chances, to be fair to them. They just couldn't convert, and they hit the post early. Hobart really came out, and they, they got a great wrist shot in the opening minute, and then they got another, another great shot in the open ice to put it up 2-0 and Beaver made some saves to keep them up 2-0 and we entered the second period and it's going to be a see if Utica can kind of calm down a bit maybe get some offense going and make it a game.
So we just finished the second period. Utica did what they had to do. I'm back up in my perch as, as usual for the day. Utica did what they had to do. They came out, they got a goal, got one back. It's cut the lead in half. We saw some more penalties called in this period, more of a, I don't want to say rougher period. It was kind of like the first. The refs just decided to blow the whistle, I guess, for, for more in this period. But no, we ended the third. It's a one goal game. Way better than being down two for, in Utica's case, makes it a more exciting game for us. And we'll let's we'll see what happens in the third period. It's uh, Utica actually enters the period on the penalty kill, so maybe Hobart will tack one on and, and maybe ice the game early. So we'll see what happens. So that was a great game between Hobart and Utica. Utica's youth, they really kind of stood out and they were able to handle what Hobart gave to them. But Hobart in the end, they got on them early and they got out of, out of there with a win. They're gonna face the winner of Trinity and Adrian tonight. Uh, and that, that game is gonna be an interesting one. The styles are very different. Um, Adrian's, it's West, it's the Lone West team here. They're known for their physicality and just offense that's, don't put them on the power play. Trinity, it's one of those where goaltending he, they're strong. He's, he's one of the best in the country, if not the best, and Adrian's going to have to crack that. They've got the home crowd tonight. They're expecting a near sellout. Uh, if they make the championship game, they're likely going to have a sellout. So we'll see how the home crowd can affect things tonight. It should play a big role, especially on home ice. It's kind of the, if you want to call it, the stars aligning for that program. So it'll be interesting to see, and we're looking forward to it. Another game like the UNE one? I hope not. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll try to keep the goals against to a minimum. Uh, it'd be nice to score that many goals, but we're not banking on that. You know, it very well could be a race to three tonight. You know, we want to prove that we're the best. You know, it's great to see that the top four seeds are here. Um, you know, it's going to be tough, but uh, to be able to, to play the number two seed tonight and then potentially the number one or the number four seed tomorrow should solidify that we can be the best team here. Matt Greeson, I'm the head hockey coach at Trinity College. Started here in 2011, been the head, co head coach since. 
I love this team. I've said this since October 22nd, we could step on the ice together. I love this team. These kids are awesome. You go to the rink every day with a smile on your face, looking forward to seeing this group. It's a mature group. It's a fun group. It's a group that knows when to have fun. It's a group that knows when to lock it in and be serious. The practices are competitive as we've ever had. Um, whenever the final buzzer sounds on the season, whether it's with a win or a loss, there will be an element of sadness to me that we're, we're not going to be able to do this again as a group. 2015, we played them in the same exact game, uh, the, the NCAA semifinal in Minneapolis. We didn't know a lot about Trinity at the time. I think uh, some of our, our players back then took them for granted a little bit, uh, just because you, you don't hear a lot about the NESCACs uh, when you're out west. But uh, they're well coached. Uh, they, they, play, they play a really good style of hockey, just on the right side of the puck all the time. They can smother you defensively. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a good team, well coached, ton of respect for them. Adrian College, the class of Division Three hockey, they, they found a consistent uh, success over the last, uh, geez, 15, 20 years now, since the program's inception. Uh, they're as talented a group as, as you'll see at this level, uh, and, and, and Kruger's a great coach, and, and I know he'll have them ready to go uh, against us, and it's going to be the biggest cha uh, challenge this group's ever seen. And we knew that, but it's the Frozen Four, and it better be a big challenge. We have one way of playing hockey, whether we're up four goals or down four goals, we believe it's a way that works and is a recipe for success. So it's up to me um, to remind us of that. And I haven't been around forever, but I've been around long enough to know that there will be a lot of ups to down, uh, tonight and a lot of downs tonight. And we need to stay steady, whether we're up two goals, down two goals, our consistency in our approach, our consistent commitment to each other needs to be there every second this evening. Let's go, guy. I know he's 10 years old. He's been to five frozen fours. I'm Carter Krug, number 49, and I play for the Toledo Cherokee. Go, Adrian.
So the way the first period ended up between Adrian and Trinity, Trinity kind of came out flying there and they ended up getting a quick goal. Adrian really didn't get themselves settled until a little bit later in the period. They didn't really look comfortable at all, honestly. And that's how the period sort of ended. The physical play was back and forth. Neither team was really given an inch. I'd say Trinity got the best of Adrian to start out. Uh, kind of surprising considering how the two teams usually play, but heading into the second, we'll see how that goes. So the second period has concluded. We had Adrian getting a goal, but Trinity also. Trinity took a 2-0 lead to add on to their 1-0 lead at the end of the first period. Adrian cut the lead in half with a nice crossover pass that ended up going five-hole on the goalie, who's been playing stellar this game. 
and Adrian sort of seemed to have kind of calmed down or, or focused more on hockey instead of the extracurriculars about midway through the period and end up working out for him. We'll see how it goes in the third period. It's been a physical game so far. The home crowd's going pretty good, even though you know, about half the student section is deciding to leave to go to the bar across the street, and significantly more are not returning than leaving. So we will see uh, how that affects the game. Uh, hopefully the crowd still has people in it by the end of it. And we'll see if Adrian can tie it up or if Trinity's going to take it.
so true and he pulled it off, they end up holding on. There was a scoreless, sec scoreless third period, I should say. Uh, yeah, it was mainly defense, and I, I think it kind of shocked everybody. I mean, unless you were one of the home crowd, I certainly was kind of shocked that Adrian had um, not gotten more than one. Uh, but no, Trudy gets to play on home ice for a title. Uh, Matt Grayson, great job coaching, and he'll be, he'll be still remembering this one. Uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing him on Saturday. It's been a long day up in my perch, so uh, looking forward to that, and we will see you on Saturday.